Okay, so we're told here that we have a drawing of a rectangle with an area of 300 square feet. The first part is saying to make drawings of at least three other rectangles that also have an area of 300 square feet. So let's start with that one first. Um, if this has an area of 300, that means that 20 right, times 15 is 300. If we're looking at area here, that means you're multiplying side um, 1 by side 2 or length by width, however you want to look at it. Um, here we have 20 by 15, so one possible area of 300 right, equals 20 by 15, and that's just because 20 times 15 is 300, and we can work from there. A fun way to, to work from here to find other numbers that multiply to 300 is to double one side and half the other. So if I take 20 I double it to 40, take 15 and I have it to 7.5, this also must equal 300. I can, go, I can do that again, I can double, right, and then half, 7.5 cut in half it is 3.75, right, so 80 times 3.75, and you can, you can check all these, they all equal 300. If you don't like that technique, going back to the first one, uh, I, can, I can work it the other way, half and double instead of double and half, so instead of 20 times 15, I can half 20 to 10 and double 15 to 30. In fact, if someone told me it was 20 times 15, I might just do this, half and double, because 10 times 300, right, is a little bit easier to think about than 20 times 15. It's just easier for me to see that that is 300. But no matter how we're doing this, what we're doing is finding two numbers where the product is 300. And that includes factors of 300 and decimal numbers as well. We could also even go into negatives here, right? Um, negative 10, right, times negative 30, is also 300. Now, this doesn't really have a physical meaning here, right? How could you have a negative side? But there's no reason we can't write it out, at least as a product. It's at least something fun to play with there. Okay, so we've got that set up. Uh, now we want to know what is the width of a rectangle with an area of 300 square feet if its length is 1 foot, if its length is 2 feet, if its length is 3 feet. So here we can start to set up a table to kind of follow this pattern. It might help us in other questions on this in this um, question, uh, but we have length, width, and area, which is kind of what I was doing before, though I was just kind of playing around the numbers. Here we're starting to build a pattern, right? And this will help us understand how to maybe plot this as a function and possibly even describe it as uh, an algebraic function um, to predict, you know, length and width for any area or to predict all the possible lengths and widths for the area of 300. We can go different ways with that. But here um, they tell us that the length is first what do they say? Is first one foot, and then two foot, and three foot, and so on, right? So well, if the length is one, the width must be 300, right? Because one times 300 is 300. If the length is two, the width must be 150, right? Multiply get the area of 300. If the length is three, the width must be 100, and that must be 300. At this point, you should kind of reflect to think, okay, what am I doing here? You know, if I pick a length, how am I finding the width, right? If I was to say, uh, we'll, we'll skip up a little bit, to 10, right, which we already did here, but how do we know that 10 times 30 is 300 without just multiplying, right? Is there a pattern here? Well, I, what I'm doing each time in my head is whatever length I pick, so we'll skip ahead to x length, or l length, call the variable l. w has to equal something, right? <laughs> and if we multiply those two, we should get the area, A. Okay, but let's define W in terms of L, right? So instead of having two variables, L times W equals A, let's think, what does W have to equal? Well, we can solve it algebraically here and divide both sides by L. Cancels out, and W is always equal to the area divided by the length. And that kind of makes sense, because what I've been doing all along is saying to myself, okay, if my length is, let's go back to 10, well, I know I have to get 300, so 10 times something is 300, All right? so in that case, it's 10 is the length times something, some width, that equals 300, right? Well, how do you solve for W? Well, you just take W equals 300 divided by 10, right, or divide both sides by 10, same thing, and that's W equals 30. The argument here is, well, if W times 10 is 300, 
then 300 divided by 10 is w. It's just working backwards. So this algebraic expression is really going to help us out uh, as we try and predict any length and width and describe it as a function. But anyway, so this is kind of a pattern we're setting up. They want to know what is the width of the rectangle with an area of 300 square feet and a length of l feet. Oh, I guess we just figured that out. Uh, except we were as a general area over length. They're saying if the area is 300, specifically, what is the width? Well, we kind of just plug it in. Here, they're saying the area equals 300. Okay, well then, w is equal to what? Well, it's equal to 300 over l. And that's the width equals 300 divided by l. Um, so it's just relating the two variables. Okay, so how does the width of a rectangle change if the length increases, but the area may, remains constant at 300 feet? Well, we can look, kind of look at our chart so far to make sense of that if we don't understand, but here the, the length is 1 and the width is 300. When we double the length, we half the width. If we triple the length, we divide the width by 3. If we multiply the length by 10 to get 10, what have we done to the width? Well, to go from 300 to 30, we divide by 10. So as the length is larger, the width gets smaller, as long as the area is constant. And you can even think about that as a, a series of fractions, right? Let's start at the beginning. If length is equal to 1, well, then w equals what? 300, the area, here's our formula, divided by 1. So then w equals 300. And then what happens? Well, as we go on, if we double length, right, if you plug into this equation, you can see why it would half, well, because w equals 300 now divided by the length, and this time the length is 2. So instead of 300 divided by 1, we have 300 divided by 2, and that's 150. If we make the length equal to 3, okay, well then now what's going to happen is that the width will equal 300 divided by 3. That equals 100. So we're dividing by a larger amount there. And that pattern follows, so we, we kind of got that question down, I think. Make a graph width and length uh, pairs for a rectangle that give us an area of 300 feet. Explain how your graph illustrates the answer for part D. So that shows uh, how the width decreases as the length increases. Okay, so we have this table up here we can use. We can generate a different table. Really, any table here. We're making a graph. They don't give us too many parameters. But what I'll do is um, I'm going to set my width and length up on the axes. And we're assuming that um, the area is always 300 for these numbers. So we're picking points where the x will represent, let's say, the length. right? So x will be length, and uh, y will be the width. So we have length right, and the width. And the assumption is if you multiply the two, you get 300. So we pick points that represent pairs that multiply to 300. And we have that in our table. We can treat these points up here, 1, 300, 2, 150, 300, and so forth, as points on a graph. All right? That's what we're setting up here. So let's set that up. Let's start uh, at 1, 300. So here's 1. Now here we'll go up, let's say, by 50s. Well, now we'll go up by, let's say, 20s. 25, excuse me. 25, 50, 75, 100. 125, 150, 175, 200, 25, 50, 75, 300. Okay. And here the length will just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Okay. So we'll, we'll plot these points. The first point, we have 1, 300, all the way up here, right? When it's 2, we go over to 150, right here. When it's 3, we had 300. And when it's 4, well, now you have 300 divided by 4. If you're struggling with that one, you use a calculator, but we can work through it logically here. I know that 4 goes 4 times 50 is 200. We're almost there. And, okay, well then, I know there's 100 left to get to 300, and 4 does go into 100. How many times? Well, 4 goes into 100, <coughs> excuse me, 25 times. So... The answer here is 4 goes into 250 times and another uh, 25 times to get to 300, that's 75. So 4 is here at 75, 25, 50, 75. 5 is going to get to what? Well, 5 times six, 60, right, is 300, so 50, 60. 
and 6 times 50 is also 300. And, um, you know, and so this does have a downward trend because we know that 10 goes to 30. But you can see that the rate at which this thing is dropping is slowing. First, we have this steep drop here. Right, but as we go along, this curve does kind of flatten out. Although not totally flat, uh, it's not as dramatic as we go on. So here our function shows that decrease. And you can even, you know, describe it a little bit more where, yeah, at first it drops really quick, right? But then as the length gets larger, though the width does drop, it just is not as dramatic. So that's our graph right there. In the next video, we'll talk about how to actually predict um, the width for any given length and express that as an equation or a function algebraically. So if you want to see that, hang in there. Thanks.